Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to The Health Project, a series of podcasts that will answer all your questions on health, fitness, nutrition, lifestyle, everything about health. I'm your host, Shwetamri Shetty, and I will be bringing in a new expert every episode to talk about health and to inspire you to live a better, stronger, and healthier life. Hello, and welcome to The Health Project your answer to everything related to fitness, health, lifestyle, and more. I'm Shwetam Rishetti, your host. And as a um, you know, fitness enthusiast, you know, someone who loves working out, someone who's been also teaching and training for so many years, I've learned you know, how important it is to maintain a very healthy spine. And this is not just for people who, you know, spend hours at the desk, but it's also for athletes or people who, you know, are super active through the day. But the right form and posture, all of that is super critical to maintaining a healthy spine. And since I've said spine so many times, you obviously already know that today's episode is spinal hygiene. And I have a very, very dear friend, an old friend, Dr. Pratap, he's one of the first chiropractors in the country, a spine spe specialist, and he's here to talk to us about spinal hygiene and most importantly about chiropractory, right? Like you don't hear about too many chiropractors. So before I hand it over to him, I'm going to give a little bit of an introduction, right? Now he is a part of the Indian Association of Chiropractic Doctors. He's also the director and head of Chiropractic for Atlas Chiropractic and Wellness. He's one of the few licensed and certified chiropractors in India. Yeah, he has clinics in three different cities already, right, mm -hmm. Doc? That's in right. Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai. We can talk more about it towards the end. But today, we're going to discuss everything you need to know, all the basics about a healthy, hygienic spine. And he's told me that. I have a spine of a 19-year-old a few years ago, but I'm 43, so I love him more for that. <laughs> but Doc. Credit due where it's deserved. <laughs> I'm really excited to have you here. And you know what, before we start, a little bit of an intro about you because you're, I know you're Indian, but you've literally never lived here. You were yeah. born, raised, everything in Canada. and But you chose to come here right. to, you know, like do your chiropractic business. And more than that, um, you're, from what I know, the only doctor in your family. Like, Well, that's, that, yeah. that, that gap is starting to close. We got some, some of the youngins starting to catch up. But yeah, first doctor in the family. I was really excited to earn that title. Yeah. That was really cool. But thank you so much for such a lovely intro. Thanks for having me on your specials podcast. It's really kind of an honor for me. And this kind of comes full circle between you and I, yeah. because when I first started here, like you were the first person that really made chiropractic very accessible at that time to a lot of people because we affiliated with the, yeah. with the gym. And um, since then, it's just been an, it's been an avalanche. You know, it's been a situation where people have just been coming in and coming in and coming in. And um, without that start, who knows where we would have been. So I owe a lot of our success to you. Cheers to that. Doc, you're just <laughs> extremely kind, but I think all the success uh, goes to just you because you started from scratch, from not being in India ever, yes. just like landing up here from yes. Canada and taking that really brave step to say, okay, I think India needs chiropractic. Yeah. So uh, I'll tell you a bit about that. That was a, a situation where in college, we had this really cool program. It was called Backpack to Briefcase. Okay. Mm -hmm. And basically... We have the unfortunate burden of both being, you know, healthcare providers who care for people, but also 90% of chiropractors exist in private practice. Yes. So we also have to be entrepreneurs on the side, you know? So bridging that gap between healthcare provider caring for your patient and also earning a living, that's a huge kind of step that a lot of people can't make freely. So this particular, um, you know, this opportunity that existed at our college helped me kind of set my path. So wow. I had three choices. I could always go back home to Canada. I, I, I went to school in New York. Yeah. So being from, Can uh, being from Canada and being raised in Canada, my, my doctorate came from New York. So I had a choice whether I could stay in the States, go back to Canada. And this third vague option of India started to kind of enter into my mind. Mm. If you think about anybody in any 
new industry. And we were talking about this a bit before, but anybody who has an opportunity as a new mover, a mover and shaker, an yeah. uh, early adopter in a particular industry, they have such an advantage, yes. right? And during my research into chiropractic in India, I noticed that there were so few chiropractors mm. here. So I thought and I thought, and it was kind of a vague idea and it took hold in my mind and my mentor was really kind of helping shape it. And at the end of it, it came down to, well, would you regret not doing it if you could? Mm -mm. So I graduated December 1st, December 3rd, I was on a plane to India. Oh my God. So this was just a kind of an exploratory trip trying to understand what chiropractic looked like in India. Yeah. And I'll tell you, there was nothing. Nobody knew what a chiropractor was. My relatives were like, what is he studying? We don't know, we, we have no clue what this is about. Yes. So um, it, was a, it was a bit of an uphill struggle. Um, in fact, I came back with no information. I came back with very little information. This was way back 2012, 13. Yeah. So fast forward a little bit. I did have my own practice in Canada. I worked for a couple of people. I built up a name. I developed a, a skill set. And um, the idea of India still never left me. Yeah. So given the opportunity to go, I was actually this uh, medical rep for a company that was selling um, pain relief patches. It was a situation where... It, they were paying me to come be a chiropractor in India. And I was like, let's do it. So I folded wow. my home practice. I folded it and I came right over here. This was way back in October 14. And they fired me December 14. <laughs> <laughs> they, they said, go home for Christmas. And uh, they told me, you know what? We're moving to India, so we don't need you. You're redundant. Goodbye. Um, so I, had a fa I faced another choice. Do I go back to Canada, start my practice there again? Or do I come back to India? And... Jan 15 was the first time I set foot here as myself. And, and you. it took until April 15 for me to even get into an office space. And there were a few times in this whole place where, you know, I, I considered going back home. I considered it because it was so hard. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, but you didn't. And you just made it big. Well, I credit, I credit my wife uh, for part of this. Yes. Uh, Nandini, she was super influential in this. She, at the time, was my support. And um, she was like, you know, give it another six months. Exactly. Give it another six months. Say you tried for a, a full year. And if you don't, it's okay. It's okay. It's something you learn. Yeah. And in that six months, it all came magic together. Magic happened. And part of that magic was when I walked into uh, the gym called The Tribe. <laughs> part of that. That all yeah, happened within... <laughs> I'm, you know, I can't understate no, no, we don't this. Want, no, no, we, we won't go get into that right now because there's so much more to talk about on chiropractic. Absolutely. Right? But I must, uh, the reason why I just took some time to talk about you is because uh, a lot of people still don't know what a chiropractor means, Absolutely. what a chiropractor does. We've all heard of physiotherapy and, right. you know, orthopedics and all of that. So it was important that you talk a little bit about how you started and, sure. you know, how did it all happen? Sure. You saw the opportunity in India. You knew that there were literally like no chiropractors or very few. Yes. And it's, it's a good market to be in and sure. help people. For sure. Right? And I had heard about it because I was into CrossFit and CrossFit in the US, um, they do a lot of chiropractic work on themselves. Yes. Now let's get into what is chiropractic and what does a chiropractor do? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here and we'll talk a little bit about vocabulary. First of all. A yeah. chiropractor is a doctor. A yes. chiropractor is a, a trained doctor, very similar to MBBS or MD, mm -mm. in the sense that we have almost a similar structure in terms of our uh, educational processes. Yes. MD, medical uh, doctors, they focus on pharmacology, toxicology, because they prescribe drugs. Chiropractic is not about prescription. It's an, a holistic, non-allopathic uh, healthcare option. Yeah. So we focus a lot on anatomy, physiology, radiology. So all chiropractors graduate with this exceptional knowledge for reading an x-ray, reading an MRI, reading an ultrasound. So that is a real benefit, especially yes. because we occupy a very, very um, specific space in the healthcare spectrum. So what is a chiropractor? A chiropractor is a healthcare professional who assesses, diagnoses, treats, and then prevents common neuromusculoskeletal conditions. Mm -hmm. It's a mouthful, okay? But basically what it means is nerve, muscle, and joint yes. is our domain of expertise. If you think about it, in a nutshell, the brain controls everything in our body yes. and our brain sends signals to our body, communicates with our body through the spinal cord. 
the spinal cord lives inside of the spine. A lot of people get that wrong. They yeah. think that the spine is the spinal cord. Yeah. It's not. The nervous tissue within the spine is. And that signal between brain and body is what we are maintaining. Mm. Like if, if you were sitting behind a couple of thick doors and your Wi-Fi signal dropped down to two bars, you would know. Yeah. You wouldn't be getting your messages. You couldn't download stuff on time. But what happens you open a door? Suddenly your bars shoot up to four and you're like, oh, I can download this movie in three minutes. Yeah. You know, thank you, Airtel. You know, like it's, it's super fine. But a lot of the time people don't realize when this is happening to their spines. And that's what chiropractic is for. Mm. By using something called a chiropractic adjustment where we assess the spine, mobilize it wherever it's restricted and creating alignment for the spine, we can open up those doors and we can increase the communication between brain and body. In, Got it. in essence, we are optimizing the brain communicating with the body to optimize health. That's it. Got it. Got <laughs> it. So something, of course, I've, you know, been treated by you. And just to make it, you know, um, a little more clear for the people in the sense, from my experience, basically, he'll put you down on that, what do you call that? Chiropractic table. A chiropractic <laughs> table. And he literally jump on you. <laughs> and he will crack you from left and right. And you'll hear all your bones and everything literally go cut, 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 cut. Right? Yes. And when you get up, you're like, oh my God, I think I have a new spine. Yes. Well, you never That's heard... That's how amazing it feels. You never heard of a spine transplant, have you? No. Which is why we have to take care of our spine. Yeah. Right? You can replace almost everything in your body. Yeah. But you can't replace your spine. And there's a reason for that. It maintains such integrity of your body and it performs such an important role that you can't easily replace it. So what do you got to do? You have to maintain what you have. Most people, as soon as they wake up in the morning, what do they do? They brush their teeth. Well, we hope so. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes. Everybody brushes their teeth in the morning and that's like an inborn, like we are, we're raised like that. Everybody knows to brush their teeth in the morning. So we spend five minutes a day, maybe in the morning and the evening, should be morning and evening. Um, we take that two minutes to three minutes in the morning and evening to take care and maintain our teeth. Yes. 32 bones that kind of do two things. They show people how you feel and they chew your food up. That's mm -mm. it. Two things. Mm. Your spine does probably about 85 million different things. And we don't even, a lot of people don't spend that same amount of time to maintain their spine. So that's what I'm on a crusade for get people to take care of their spine battle and maintain spinal hygiene. I think that's such a fantastic point. If we could even do five, 10 minutes of work for the spine on a very regular basis, we will all be having very healthy spine, right? And that's what spinal hygiene is, Absolutely. what you want to talk about. Um, so let's get, now, now that we know, you know, <laughs> okay, what a chiropractor does and, you know, what, what the whole concept is, let's get into a little bit of spine talk sure. in a sense. You are a spine specialist. Yes. And uh, I know you've fixed so many people with all sorts of back problems, right? Yes. Even other stuff, but yes. we're talking about spine, so I'm just going to focus on that. Sure. And, and a lot of people probably don't have access to a chiropractor or, you know, anyone else for that matter, but have a very, you know, certain lifestyle where they may need constant spinal care. Sure. So what are some basic things that you would tell people to do to maintain that spinal hygiene we're talking about? Like you just mentioned that example of brushing and exactly. giving that little time for your spine care. My go-to, like whenever people need direction, analogies are useful, you yes. know? So comparing it to something really simple yes. is what I try to do with each of my patients, yes. right? If we can take the complication out of things, I think it gets way easier and yeah. people are more likely to do it. You know, so even in our center, so to, to touch a little bit about the cracking. Yes, it's not all about the cracking, yes. right? Cracking is often the, the thing that people will see the most on YouTube and Instagram. Exactly. And stuff. It's, it's, the, it's, it's pop, you know, it's the, it's the stuff that people want. It's that ASMR feel. And, and, and that's cool. And I'm glad because when I started, people had no idea what chiropractic is. And now people are like, you got to do that Y strap thingy where you pull the neck with the, you know, and I'm like, not for you, not in your case, but the idea is that that, that information is out there. People mm. are aware of what we can do. So while that's a part of it, the cracking and popping, the alignment, the chiropractic adjustment is yeah. part of it. Yeah. Um, there's so many things that you can do that, I mean, this sounds like bad business, but if you can prevent spinal issues at home, you should. Absolutely. Right? So it starts with a simple walk, right? 
How many people have a routine where they go for a walk? I'm not even asking you to go for a jog, get a fancy you know, gym membership, uh, you know, run on the treadmill or anything like that. Just a simple walk, put on some running shoes, get outside, walking for 10 to 15 minutes, morning and evening is a great way to start. Mm -mm. If you are completely sedentary, if you are the prototypical desk jockey, mm -mm. and you're having issues, maybe you don't even have pain, maybe it's not reached that point yet, we know it's coming. <laughs> we'll yeah. be seeing you soon. So the whole idea is that get started, get that motion going. So, And I, this applies to so many different people. It's not just people who are sitting at a desk. I tell athletes this all the time, mm -mm. you know? Yes, you've worked out for an hour. Great. But if, you, if your job is sitting eight hours a day, your workout of one hour has been reduced by 70%. It's okay. 18 minutes of a workout. Now, how much is that worth? So all of these things being said, exercise is, it can be combined into a very, very movement. Take the stairs, you know? I'm, your office is on the second floor, but you're taking the elevator, take the stairs, you mm -hmm. know, really simple. Uh, okay, even something like if you're if you're at home, if you're a, a person who's a homebody, uh, a housewife or a house husband, yeah. you know, if you're you know your job is to be at home, then you don't have to be sitting on the couch. You don't have to finish your your chores all in one go, right? Mm -hmm. It can be split up. Mm -hmm. If you're washing the clothes for thirty minutes, take a break, take a five minute rest, or go to another room and do something else. Mm -hmm. Change the position you're in. Mm. These are small things that we can do every single day that can really maintain our spinal hygiene. We, wow. Huh. I have a mom too. It's like she's really, really like, once I put my hands on something, I got to finish it. Yeah. Especially when it comes to household chores. Yeah. So getting that, to, getting that idea out of her head and getting that into a more of a rhythmic like, okay, after 30 minutes of doing this, I'll do this for five minutes and then mm -hmm. I'll come back to this. It saved her shoulders. It saved her back. It saved her legs from so much excess degeneration. That's a fantastic point because now I'm connecting this to why are we telling people not to sit for long hours? It's right. the same thing, right? right? So you're saying don't sit for long hours, but at the same time when you're doing an activity, don't continue doing the same activity for hours, hours together. it's still going to bother you. Exactly. Movement. Motion is lotion. I'm somebody much, somebody <laughs> much smarter than me coined that phrase, but it's just one of those things. My, my addition to that is movement is improvement. Yes. A lot of times what happens is people are stuck with this idea, if it hurts, don't. Mm -mm. You know, mm -mm. if it hurts, do not do anything that would make it worse. But they, they catastrophize this. They make this way bigger than it actually is. Yeah. If I've sprained my ankle, right, I've stepped off a curve, I, you know, in the Ranagar pavements or something like that, I, I've turned my ankle and now it's swollen, a lot of people will say, okay, bed rest one, one week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is. And that's not helpful anymore. Correct. Right? Recent information and recent rehab information tells us that if we get that joint moving sooner, maybe not all the way. I'm not going to run a TCS 10K tomorrow if I've sprained my ankle yesterday. But the idea is that if I can mobilize it and start to put a little bit of weight on it and start the rehabilitation process earlier, yeah. it'll heal better. And that's actually what our motto is at yeah. Atlas. It's yeah. heal better. It's not just about feeling better and getting that pain away. It's about healing better. Yeah, and it's, it's long term. It's not just for that moment. But I think I love the point. Movement is improvement. Mm -hmm. That's right? my yeah. small Motion is lotion. Correction. Yeah, I, I, it makes complete sense. I think ultimately it's about constantly mobilizing it and allowing it to do what it's supposed to do. Exactly. Right? But, but apart from like movement, Right. Um, and like you said, you know, doing different activities through the day. Are there some sort of um, maybe exercises or anything that you would, I know there can be plenty. Yeah. And, and I ask this because uh, about exercises that people could probably do is because in, you know, Stuart McGill's book, he yeah. talks about how, you know, these planks and side planks sure, are sure, so sure. key for spinal hygiene. I wanted you to throw some light on, is there anything it could be a housewife, it could be, you know, someone who is at the desk or someone who's doing some sort of other functional sort of an activity outdoor, anything that they can do. They can't exercise, but anything that they can do at home. Absolutely. There's so many things that can be done. Um, I like to see the spine move in multiple angles. Okay. Okay. Now, again, I have to, I have to preface this by saying, like, if you're having pain, get it assessed first. 
you know, yeah. before you're doing anything, um, you know, YouTube recommendations yes. or whatever, before you do all that, get it assessed first. Make sure it's safe for you to do. Yes. Right? Fair. Because there's so many reasons you can have back pain, right? One of the most common ones is a disc, disc bulge, disc herniation, slip disc. That's a, the, I think 90% of my patients are of this category, right? So if it's a situation like that, we recommend specific sets of exercises. But if it's just a situation of maintaining spine, make sure you're moving your spine in both ways. Like for example, could you lay on your back and pull your, your, your knee to your chest? Hmm. That's a really great way to create something called flexion for your spine. Yeah. Can you turn over onto your tummy and lay on your elbows and hmm. do something called the Sphinx? That's a great way to extend. Yeah. yeah. So we're used to the Bhujangasana or the Cobra yeah. pose where we're extending our arms and extending our back. But for some people who don't have that range of motion, being in the Sphinx is Elbow. a way easier one to do. It's like a half Cobra. Yeah. You know? Got it. And that's, a, that's kind of an easier way to do things. You know, I always recommend incrementally changing your load. Hmm. Right. So if you've not done anything for the longest time and I'm, you know, probably at the wrong time to do 10 burpees. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you are slowly ramping up, you just did your 15 minute walk, what else could you do? I recommend moving your spine in both directions. Mm. Um, you know, our YouTube channel has a ton of exercise routines that you can kind of follow. Your YouTube really, channel, right? really simple. What, there's, a, what? there's a chair yoga. This is Atlas Cairo India. Atlas Cairo India YouTube yep. channel. Okay. Um, Cairo sometimes is said wrong. Sometimes people want to call it chiropractic and oh, okay. chiropractory, which sometimes you say. C-H-I, Cairo. Cairo, means practice of the hands. Chi meaning hands, okay. practic meaning practice. So um, Atlas Cairo India, Atlas C-H-I-R-O India. Um, we have chair yoga, for example, mm. and that's something that is very useful for desk jockeys. It's Got just it. five minutes of things you can do while you're sitting in your chair. Uh, if you have a little bit more of a, you know, maybe it's a neck thing, maybe it's a back thing. We have specific things set up for neck and back. We're working on some routines for shoulder, knee, ankle, which are other commonly injured places. Yeah. But uh, yeah, these are these are basic ideas for how to stretch safely without adding too much uh, negative input. Correct. I, I also want to say that. If you feel a twang, you know, you're doing something, something doesn't quite feel right, you can listen to your body and that's fine. I'm okay with that. But if you make that the reason why you're not exercising at all, mm. that really yeah. exacerbates part of the problem. We really don't want that. And again, like I said, if there is some sort of pain issues, uh, something that is continuing over a period of time, get it assessed, don't wait. Yeah. And in, in your opinion, a lot of people coming to you with spinal issues. Would you say it's primarily due to lack of movement? Oh yeah, I, I would say that that would be the number one thing. A lot of people don't even realize that them not moving around mm. is the problem. Oh my God. Because it's, I'm just sitting there, why should that hurt? That, yeah. Well, I'll, the, the physics of it is really simple, okay? Gravity, is a force that is pulling us all to the earth, mm -mm. right? As you and I sit here, it's pulling us to the earth through our chairs. Mm -mm. If I was to stand up, can I stand up in this frame? Yeah. Okay. I think you can. Okay, so <laughs> if I stood up, right? Gravity is pulling me through both of my legs mm -mm. and my spine, it's sharing it by three, mm -mm. okay? Now, if I sit down, all of gravity is sitting on my spine. So I'm getting that compression, Got it. which over a period of time, is going to long hours a day every day it can really cause us problems yeah i think that made a lot of sense the the example and the compression when you sit down that's that's all it is and that's the education part that we have to keep giving people we have to keep letting them know that hey there's a wide spectrum right there's a huge spectrum it's like too little and too much activity yes right you know why i asked you that question because of course people are doing all types of you know jobs and activities and things like that. Right. But what's happening is I've, I've been hearing of people just sitting down in their pot in the morning yeah, and yeah. not being able to get up, Yeah. right? Or just bending to pull the shutter up. This actually happened to my father, despite being quite an active <laughs> man. Bending to pull the shutter up and even before it could completely come up, they have some catch or spasm. So I'm, I'm like, it's, why has it become so complex? Yeah, well, if you think about it, we evolved as hunter-gatherers, right? Yeah. We were always on the move and our bodies have adapted to that. 
Like we evolved that way. Yeah. We were supposed to be moving around. Introduce the chair and the computer and everything is online, chat GPT and okay. et cetera. Like everything is online right now. So everybody is going into this position, which our bodies are not built for. Okay. So will it break down? It will. It certainly will. So um, the whole idea is that, uh, you know, if we, can, if we can just kind of create a little bit of movement every single, at yeah. every given point, we yeah. should see a lot of change. Yeah. And um, I think one of the major things is that if we continue to evolve this way, back pain will become ubiquitous. Four out of five adults have a disc bulge now. Okay. Four out of five adults have a disc bulge. Now, that's an alarming number, which obviously he knows and I don't. <laughs> but So when somebody comes in and they say, oh, yeah, you know what? Um, the doctor says I have a disc bulge. I'm like, welcome to the club. You know, you're part of the majority now. It's sad, but it's true. Yeah, but this, th I think that information at the end is going to be the key here. You may not experience some pain right now, but even if you have any sort of stiffness, you know, when you wake up in the morning or through the day, you probably know that you're heading towards some sort of issue of the spine. Absolutely. Right? So I think the core of today's, you know, uh, discussion was to just bring about some sort of, uh, what do I say, awareness, give you more information, not just about the existence of, you know, a chiropractor and what they can do for you and your spine, but just simple spinal hygiene that you can follow on a regular basis to avoid hitting a dead end. And then when you do, of course, you know, there are Dr. Prataps who can help you. Absolutely. But it's, it's just, you know, not the best place to be. So if movement can help you tremendously in just avoiding getting there, move more often. Exactly. And right? when you're consulting a chiropractor, just make sure you're visiting an authentic chiropractor. Authentic chiropractor. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that because yeah, yeah. there are people who are not so authentic as well. But I'm, I'm really uh, hoping that this has helped you, you know, in understanding like the most basics. And if you need to reach out to Dr. Pratap or Atlas Chiropractic, you please feel free to reach out to them. They also have clinics in three different cities, Chennai, Hyderabad and Bangalore. Yes. And in Bangalore, they're in Indranagar, Whitefield, HSR layout, right? right? Or directly connect with them on Instagram, right? You can. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and you can write to us, you know, email us, hello at CureFit. We have our Twitter, uh, Instagram. So connect with us anywhere. Uh, subscribe to the channel and let us know what more you want to listen to because with Dr. Pratap, we're also going to talk a little bit more about spine, particularly targeting the desk jockeys because that makes the maximum number of people in probably our country, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you, Dr. Pratap. Is there anything you want to say before we say goodbye? I just like to tell everybody it's really, really simple to maintain good spinal hygiene. All it requires is a little bit of movement every so often. When you have a pain, when you have discomfort, when you have some sort of an issue, get it assessed, get it treated, get it diagnosed. And most importantly, whatever the follow-up steps are required, follow it up so you can prevent it from happening. Yeah. So as we say in Atlas, uh, don't just feel better, also heal better. Heal better. Thank you so much, Doc. It was wonderful my having pleasure. you. My pleasure. Thank you. All my pleasure.